Hey guys, today we will discuss a little bit about a tool called TCP dump on Arista switches. We will learn what TCP dump is, understand the difference between control plane and data plane traffic, go through the commonly used TCP dump flags and filters, and I will top it off with an example to demonstrate its use. So what is TCP dump? Simply put, it is a packet capture and analyzer tool. It can be used to see packets ingressing or egressing an interface. It can also be used to read existing packet captures or PCAPs. TCP dump is a Linux tool and those of you familiar with Linux systems might already know about it. Since US is built on top of Linux, we can use TCP dump the same way you would use on any other Linux machine. TCP dump is the single most commonly used tool to troubleshoot network problems. This is because it gives us visibility into the traffic flowing through a switch, which is immensely important in debugging issues. Oh, by the way, since Arista devices are multi-layer switches, you might hear me use the term switch and router interchangeably. So now that we know what TCP dump is, let's understand the difference between control plane and data plane traffic from the switch's perspective. To keep things simple, any kind of traffic that needs to be punted to the CPU for extra software processing can be considered control plane for the switch. Ideally, any traffic pertaining to a protocol that is LLDP, LSCP, PGP, etc. is control plane. Now, data plane traffic would be any traffic that is handled by the switch in hardware without the need of CPU processing. That is, the switch might bridge the traffic or route the traffic based on its MAC address table or routing table respectively. All of this is data plane for the switch. Now, let's get into the functioning or behavior of TCP dump on Arista switches. The most important rule to remember is that TCP dump on any interface will only capture control plane packets by default. Let's say we want to capture packets on interface Ethernet 1, then the command to do so would be bash tcp dump hyphen nei et1. I will explain what hyphen nei stands for later when we discuss common tcp dump flags. When we run this command, we will see different types of traffic based on what that port is configured as. Let's say if Ethernet 1 is configured as L2 port, meaning trunk or access, we would see STP and LLDP packets. If Ethernet 1 was a part of port channel, then we would see LACP and LLDP packets on Ethernet 1 and STP packets on the TCP dump of port channel since these packets traverse to the port channel and not through individual links. Now remember in the last slide when I talked about control plane traffic, I mentioned any packets pointed to the CPU. In this case, if Ethernet 1 is L3 port, then in addition to protocol packets that is PGP and OSPF, TCP dump will also capture ICMP packets, packets that have IP options set because such packets are software forwarded and punted to the CPU. If we want to see all the packets to and from CPU irrespective of the Ethernet port, then we should run bash tcp dump hyphen nei any. However, one quirk of this command is that it does not capture L2 control print traffic such as STP, LACP, LLDP, but we will see everything apart from it. This can get very talkative, thus I would recommend combining bash tcp dump hyphen nei any with appropriate flags and filters as discussed later. After control plane, let's move on to capturing data plane traffic. Since data plane traffic is not visible via TCP dump on the actual interface, certain Arista platforms have a feature called advanced mirroring to capture data plane traffic. For this, we would need to set up a mirror session. Think of it as a monitor session, but the destination is CPU in this case. Once we configure that, we need to run TCP dump on the mirror interface that is created. The command would look like bash, TCP dump hyphen NEI mirror X, where X is the mirror port number associated to monitor session, which can be found out by running show monitor session. TCP dump on mirror session will capture all traffic going through the interface, which includes control plane traffic as well. Note that mirror traffic gets sent to CPU and can get rate limited by our control plane protection to ensure that the CPU does not get overwhelmed by data plane traffic. So these are some commonly used TCP dump flags. Remember the hyphen NEI I was talking about? Hyphen I specifies the interface TCP dump should capture packets on. Hyphen E gets the Ethernet header. And we can choose to not resolve host names or port numbers with hyphen N or hyphen NN flag. We can also control the amount of packet details TCP dump gives back with hyphen V or hyphen VV flag. We can try hyphen VVV flag as well if you are feeling quite adventurous. Next, these are some common TCP dump filters. We can capture traffic sourced by a specific IP or destined towards a particular layer 4 port or a combination of both using these filters. We can get really creative about the type of traffic we want to capture by combining multiple filters using AND OR statements. Alright, now that we have some theoretical knowledge about TCP dump, it's time we put that to practical use. 
So I've got a setup here of three switches, switch one, switch two, and switch three. Switch one and two are connected via ethernet five and six, which has been bundled into port channel one. Switch two and three are connected via ethernet 49 slash one. Ethernet 49 slash one on switch three is an L3 port with an IP address of 1.1.1.2 slash 24. On switch two, I've created a VLAN 10 and assigned ethernet 49 slash one and port channel one to it. On switch one, I have again assigned port channel one to VLAN 10 and I've created an SVI for the VLAN 10 with an IP address of 1.1.1.1 slash 24. Apart from this, I've configured switch three and switch one to be BGP neighbors of each other. So any BGP packets that are exchanged between switch one and switch three will be data pin from switch two's perspective. All right, so I've got switch one, switch two, and switch three here. Let's start with switch three. To capture packets on Ethernet 49 slash one, let's run TCP dump on it. Oh no, we see an error that no such device exists. This is because Linux kernel doesn't understand 49 slash one. Let's then take a look into ifconfig to see how the interface is listed as in the kernel. Oh, so it is 49 underscore one. Now that we know our mistake, let's go back and rectify it and try to run TCP dump again with hyphen C10 flag, which means capture 10 packets and then stop. So we see some LLDP packets exchanged between switch two and switch three in addition to the BGP keepalash. We know we see the BGP packets because these are generated by the CPU or they are punted to the CPU as the destination IP is present on 49 slash one. Taking a look into switch one, let's run TCP dump on ET5, which is part of port channel one. We see the LACP PDUs and LLDP packets. We don't see any HTTP PDUs because those would be sent over the port channel and not the individual member links. Now, since PGP neighborship is over an IP that is present on interface VLAN 10, let's run TCP dump on VLAN 10. These are the BGP keepers exchanged with switch three. In addition to BGP, let's start continuous pings to 1.1.1.2 IP that is present on switch three. Now, if we follow the data path, the ICMP and BGP packets exchanged between switch one and three go through switch two. Running TCP dump on switch two on ET49 underscore one, or port channel one. We don't see those ICMP or BGP packets as expected since these are data plane to switch to. To look at the data plane ICMP and BGP packets going through port channel one, let's configure an advanced mirror session which will send all packets to CPU. So just a note here that when we are dealing with a port channel, the mirror session source would be the port channel and not the member interface. Port channel one. Destination. If you see CPU as one of the destination, then your platform supports advanced mirroring. The mirror interface created is mirror zero. Running TCP dump on mirror zero. And here are all the ICMP and BGP packets. Note that with more traffic being mirrored, there is a chance that we might not see all the packets since control plane protection will kick in. Let me demonstrate how filters are used. Let's say we only want to take a look at the packets sourced from switch one. So I will use the filter SRC host 1.1.1.1. Since 1.1.1 IP belongs to switch one. VLAN 10 interface. Now say if we only want to take a look at the ICMP packets from switch three, I'll use source as 1.1.1.2 and ICMP. Moving to switch three again, let's capture all the packets punted to CPU. So as we see, there are a lot of SSH packets since they would all hit the CPU. Excluding these, we will see those BGP and ICMP packets amongst other stuff. For platforms not capable of running advanced mirroring, we do have a little trick up our sleeve and can still capture packets, but only in the inbound direction using SBLO. 
SPLA is a sampling technology used to capture statistical data and a switch sensor copy to the CPU for sampling. Again, SPLA data is subjected to rate limiting, similar to advanced mirroring. Let's remove the monitor session and run SPLA. To run SPLA, it's pretty simple. You just have to configure SPLA run. By default, SPLA is enabled on all interfaces. To only see packets coming in on port channel 1, I will disable SFlow from the remaining interfaces. So SFlow rate by default is 1048576, which means the switch will sample one packet out of 1048576 packets that come in on port channel 1. Let's configure it to be 1 so that every data plane packet will get sampled and go to CPU. Now that we have SFlow enabled for port channel 1 with sample rate 1, TCP dump on port channel 1 will show every packet ingressing on the interface and as expected, we will see the ICMP and BGP cable lives. And that my friends is TCP dump on Arista switches for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.